since last time, I learned that there are a lot more ways to improve these uh, practical item encoders than I thought there would be. But honestly, I don't understand any of those ways well enough to try to teach anyone else about them. So for this last video of the series, I actually just want to talk about some math, uh, specifically Pascal's triangle. You can use and build item encoders perfectly fine with everything else in the series without knowing the math I'm about to show you. But I think it's cool. But additionally, the math explained to me why some of the patterns I saw popping up in these encoding schemes were there. So I guess it was kind of useful just for helping me get my head around the like structures underneath the encoding schemes here. Okay, so what, what patterns am I talking about though? Uh, what I mean specifically is the amount of tokens in an encoding scheme uh, in relationship to how many bits there are. So for instance, this is an 8-bit encoder and it uses one token codes, two token codes, three token codes, and a subset of four token codes. Or we could look at this encoder, it's six bits and uses the one, two, three, four, five, and six token codes. Uh, as a reminder, if you have, you know, a binary number, the amount of ones in it is just what we call its, its tokens. So this is a three token code, three token, uh, two, two, two token codes here. I messed this up. <laughs> Let me change this to a two. Uh, the first concept I'm going to have to explain is binomials if you haven't encountered them. So in math, selecting like a small group of objects from a larger collection comes up a lot. So we have a symbol for it. It's called binomial. It's two numbers. It's not a fraction. And the bigger number is the size of the collection you're selecting from. And the smaller number is how many items you're selecting from that collection. I, I don't mean like Minecraft items, just objects. This is a really general idea in math. And for two objects from a collection of five, there's 10 different ways you can make that selection. And so we'd say that five choose two is equal to 10. Already, you might see where this is going. The pattern here looks very similar to some of the patterns we get in our encoding schemes down there. And that's not a coincidence. What is nice about binomials is that we do have a pretty simple expression for them. We don't have to count all the different selections every time. So if I wanted to know what 10 choose 3 is, that's how you'd say it. Um, the formula is 10 factorial over 3 factorial, uh, divided also by their difference, so 10 minus 3, 7 factorial. And uh, this example is 120. So uh, without writing out all the examples, we can know that there's 120 ways to pick three objects from a collection of 10. So before we even get into Pascal's triangle, that right there just gave you a way to count how many codes of a given amount of tokens there are for an encoder with a given amount of bits. Yeah, so just as a quick example, if we had a 7-bit encoder and wanted to know how many 4-token codes are there, we would just calculate 7 choose 4, which is 35, I think. Oh, by the way, the reason that binomials and Pascal's triangle are super closely related, it's because Every whole number binomial actually appears in Pascal's triangle. It's almost kind of what Pascal's triangle is. Um, if you haven't heard of it, the easy way to define what Pascal's triangle is is you just make a big list of numbers, and at any given like point, each number is the sum of the number above it and diagonally upwards. Although usually I think you'd see this like center justified, so it'd look more like an equilateral triangle. I've left justified it because that'll be easier for matching up some ideas with encoders to it. But yeah, sure enough, in uh, the row that starts with 5 here, 5 choose 2 is 10. Sure enough, we get a 10 here. So 5 choose 0 is 1, because there's one way to choose 0 items from a set of 5. Uh, 5 choose 1. It's five, you know, five items. Five choose two is 10. Five choose three is 10. Five choose four is five, because you're just leaving one out. And then five choose five is one, because there's only one way to take every item from a collection. But what's cool is this holds for any number. So like, you know, nine choose three would be 84. But Pascal's triangle here is cool because it's it's a double relationship. There's two ways this thing comes up in encoding schemes. That's the first way. The second way it comes up is with the capacity of the filters. So you remember we're using double chest, which means each 
filter in our encoder can only check for 54 possible different items. And, and when we have our encoding scheme written out here, each one of these white wool blocks represents an item that has to be uh, in one of the filters, specifically in the filter in the same like column. So another perfectly good question you can ask is, you know, say here we're at nine bits. These are the three token codes here. You could ask how many three token codes are there with nine bits, but you could also ask how many items do the three token codes contribute to the filters in total? And you know, you could go through here and count up how many white wool blocks there are in each column in this section of three token codes, but there's a really cool shortcut that again uses Pascal's triangle. So a good trick we can use here is because we're taking every three token code, and you know, these codes are all symmetrical, they don't prefer one bit over another. So even without counting these, we can know that this section of three token codes is contributing the same amount of items to each of the nine filters. It's not like one item filter gets more items in it from a single section of codes here. Because of that, we can use a trick here, which is, I, I wrote out this general formula with variables, which, I don't know, it's, it's helpful to see the bigger picture, but it makes it harder to grasp as a concrete example. Um, but let's just say we were doing nine bits, three tokens. I'm using just B and T here to represent bits and tokens in general. So if we have uh, nine bits, three tokens, this binomial represents how many different codes of that type we have, which again was 84. So multiplied by the number of tokens, which in this case was three, uh, this product is the total amount of tokens added across all the filters. And well, if we have nine bits, then we have nine filters. So if we take the total number of tokens added across all filters and divide by the number of filters, that gives us the amount of tokens added per filter which is the information we need to calculate whether or not we're hitting that 54 item limit. And it turns out there's actually a super cool, like, simplification here. So, I don't know, if you want a good, like, homework exercise for this, see if you can prove that B choose T times T and divided by B is equal to another binomial. It's equal to B minus 1 choose T minus 1. Okay, so what that means is, let me, I'll make this concrete. If you have, if you're looking at say the nine bit codes that have three tokens each, there's 84 of them, but they don't contribute 84 items per filter. They contribute B minus one choose T minus one, which is H choose two, because we were doing nine choose three. So this is eight choose two, eight choose two. Just look at the triangle over here is 28. So you can use binomials to calculate how many codes there are with a specific amount of tokens and bits. You can also use binomials to calculate how many items that collection of codes contributes to your filters. And specifically, you know, if you're looking at like seven bit codes, this row here tells you how many codes you'll get with seven bits. The row above offset one to the left uh, tells you how many items those codes contribute to your filters. So in other words, the seven bit codes with one token contribute one item per filter. The seven bit codes with two tokens, there's 21 of them, uh, contribute in total six items to each of your item filters. The three token codes with seven bits, there's 35 of them, contribute 15 items to each of your filters and so on and so forth. You get the point. The cool thing is now we know that 54 is the max, so we can figure out how many tokens we can use by just adding up from left to right. So, you know, 1 plus 6 is 7 plus 15, 22, plus 20 is 42, and then plus 15 again would bring us up to 57, which would mean we're over capacity. This was representing the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 token codes. This means if we were using a 7-bit encoder, we wouldn't have enough filter capacity to use uh, six token codes, If assuming we were like picking the lowest token codes first, because that's how you get the most items out of the encoder. That was what, what that whole exercise over there was about. So when I wrote out Pascal's triangle here, I added up from the left, 
until I hit 54. And the like number in Pascal's triangle that bumped us up above 54, I, I'm highlighting here in orange. So, you know, take six bit codes. The row above tells you how many items are being added to the filters. You can see we can add in every code and still not hit 54. So in other words, with a six bit encoder, like we had over there, you don't have to leave out any codes. You can use all of them, but starting at uh, seven bit codes and down, you have to start leaving out certain token counts. And you can see it actually kind of like squeezes down towards the left. And eventually this orange column will actually move over one more. And all you'll have in your encoder is one and two token codes. But that doesn't happen until you're encoding like 4,000 distinct items or something like that. And then lastly, I took this like triangle uh, and then like flipped it down face down onto the ground and made a height map. So uh, here's the height map, like literally. So, you know, if we were adding up from left to right, uh, you remember here we went up to, I think, 57 with this 15. So over here, yeah, we literally have a 57 high column of blocks. And then I've marked with stained glass where the uh, height of 54 is. And so this tells you like how many tokens you can use without hitting filter capacity. That's what this green area is. And then the red area is the area where if you were to try to use that many codes with that many token counts, you would overflow your filter capacity. And then this like curve that cuts the middle between the red and the green regions marks the token counts of some family of codes where in an optimal encoder, you can't use every one of them, but you can use like some of them. That's what these whole little like diagonal families were about was trying to strategically pick subsets of the token counts that we couldn't take all of because we didn't have room in the filters for all of them. I, I took this shape and just kind of squished it down so it's a little easier to see. And it's cool, like you never really think about it, but if you take a height map of the partial sums of Pascal's triangle, you actually get like a little like curved triangle object in 3D space. And where that curved object hits a horizontal plane marks out where all the legal encoding schemes are in Minecraft, which is like a super weird relationship, but hey, it's there. So obviously you don't need this math to like build an item encoder or use it, but when designing these with pencil and paper and trying to get a grip on what was going on, I found these equations super helpful and thought they were worth sharing. So that's it for this video and that's it for the encoder series. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in another video. Bye.